Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and today we have a chance to take a look at a cool piece of World War I history. These are a pair of 1916 rifles with original night sights. So, in fact, pretty much everybody, well all the major powers in the First World War, actually adopted luminous night sights on their rifles. And they pretty much all did it in 1916. Uh, we know for the British it was specifically July of 1916 when this type of sight was uh, officially listed in their book of changes, or list of changes, where they formally adopted uh, military equipment. The Germans had a very similar style of night sight that I believe were also adopted in 1916. The French did as well, although I don't have a, a label here with the 1916 pattern night sights on it. But um, both the British and the Germans used a clip-on style to so that you could take any rifle in the field and add night sights to them. So let's take a look at how they did it. All right, we have a standard uh, World War I German Gewehr 98 here. This particular one is Spandau 1916 production. It has the standard uh, Langevazir roller coaster rear sight, and clipped onto it here is a luminous rear sight. So I can take this off for you pretty easily. Just unscrew both of these, and this slips right off. And what you have there are two horizontal lines with a nice big open circle between them. Now these lines, as with all of the luminous parts in these two, both of these rifles, these would have been originally painted with a luminous radium paint. Now radium has a half-life of something like 1600 years, so the radium is still radioactive in there. However, the paint that it was a, a part of, the paint has broken down over time, and so these are no longer actually luminous. Um, there's a little bit of misconception about that, I think. But the way this actually works on the inside is quite simple. You have these two little thumb screws, and they simply go into, go into those little casting recesses right here and hold the sight in place. So if we open those up, this just slides on right there, like so, and then And screw it back on. This was not intended to be uh, a super precise rear sight. This is for short range nighttime shooting. The front sight to go along with this is basically the same pattern. It's also screwed on and this, this is pretty tight, but these folded down. Um, in fact this one's tight enough that I'm going to leave it alone rather than fold it all the way down. But uh, if you weren't using it you could fold it all the way down and then you can use your original rear sight notch with your original front sight. Uh, and then for nighttime use, you push that up vertical, and that gives you a nice white, there we go, uh, glow in the dark front sight. And that circle, that white circle, centers up very nicely right in that uh, center bit. So this one actually provides a really nice sight picture. Now, our second rifle is a Lee Enfield, a short magazine Lee Enfield number one Mark III Star. This is a 1917 production gun, and it also has a pair of added on night sights. I can lift the rear sight up vertically to give you a nice clear view of this. A very similar rear sight, uh, however, inside there is just there we go, you can see it better now is a semicircular rear U notch, and that's, that's actually the original notch from the standard rear sight. So there's your original notch, and you're just clamping these two luminous bars on alongside it. The Enfield night sight here isn't quite as easy to remove as the German one. Um, you can see that it's screwed in place. It's a two-part sight. There's a bottom plate on it right there. And so you put it onto the sight and then screw on the bottom plate. You can't quickly remove it like you can the German, but it's also, I suspect, less liable to be damaged, dinged, or bumped out of the way. Now we also actually have a second cool device on this particular Enfield, and that is a spring-loaded mud flap muzzle cover. So this replaces the cross screw on the nose cap of the Enfield here. Goes through to there, and this provides a spring-loaded little plate over the muzzle. should be pretty clear what the benefit of that is in uh, Flanders fields. 
Uh, notice also that there is a, a sheet metal extension up here that blocks your sight picture, because you don't want to put a bullet into this. It wouldn't blow up the rifle, but it would suck. So this is there so that you know, oh right, I still have a muzzle cover. So you open that up first, then you can look at the front sight. So where the German night sights had a big round ball for a front sight, the British ones have a vertical white line. Um, this also folds down. This one folds nice and easily. So you can then use your regular rear sight during the day, and then just flip that up for nighttime use. Uh, the sight picture that this one affords, to my mind, is not nearly as good as the Gewehr 98, um, although it's a little tricky to say just how good they are uh, if you don't actually have nighttime and actual glowing sights. Um, you know, I'm looking at these with lo looking at everything that I can actually see uh, in the light. If I could only see the three luminous bits, uh, they might uh, they might behave a little bit differently. But um, yeah, there you go. So I should include a little bit of a safety note here at the end. I think on the subject of radium, radium is a radioactive substance and it is potentially dangerous. However, the amount of radium actually in these sites is pretty trivial. And unless you're going to do something stupid like lick them, I'm it doesn't pose any conceivable hazard to you. Um, there are stories of people who had serious problems with radium exposure, but they tended to be people uh, who were working with the stuff in a professional industrial capacity. The, the people who were painting watch dials with radium, um, the, the radium girls who were using little paintbrushes, and, and they'd paint radium paint and then they'd lick the paintbrush to, you know, to bring it to a point. That sort of thing, yes, that will cause a serious health issue. Being around these hundred-year-old night sites, not so much. So anyway, um, really cool to get a chance to take a look at original World War I night sites. I think a lot of people maybe don't realize that we had, we, pretty much everybody, had that technology in World War I. And as people started using, making use of night attacks, they started adding night sites to rifles. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.